Not long ago, NASA began testing the most powerful solar electric propulsion thrusters that mankind has ever seen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans, and you're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. It's great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. These thrusters, solar electric propulsion thrusters, play an important role for NASA's gateway. This is the outpost that actually orbits the moon. Engineers from NASA and Aerojet Rocketdyne have begun the multi-year qualification testing of the most powerful solar electric propulsion thrusters that have ever been invented. These will radically change propulsion in space, a press release from the space agency said. And I just love the fact that you can actually get all this solar from anywhere. Space, don't need gasoline or rocket fuel out there. You can just use solar, that's amazing. For decades, space research has relied on chemical propulsion to generate millions of pounds of thrust, and it's attempted to make bigger and more powerful rockets to take us further in our space voyages. Well, interesting engineering says that while this is a standard, even with the most advanced methane powered rocket engines, it's not the most efficient way to move in space. Chemical propulsion requires spacecraft to carry large amounts of propellants on board, especially if they have to make return journeys back to Earth. However, electric propulsion can drastically reduce the amount of fuel required on a spacecraft while also increasing travel speeds making it critical for future missions. And I mean, think about it this way. You can't really resupply a rocket when you're out in space. Now, I guess you could, but you would need some other rocket to fly to you to resupply you. That's a bit complicated and challenging. If you have these solar power propulsion thrusters, you can simply wait until you have enough energy. So what exactly is solar electric propulsion? In an electric propulsion system, electricity is used to ionize inert gases such as xenon or krypton. A magnetic or electrostatic field is then used to accelerate these ions and push them out of the thruster to generate higher speeds. While this might not appear flamboyant or really all that amazing to the eye, because you're not going to see all the flames and the explosions, essentially, that you get with rocket engines, it's actually still an amazing sight to behold. The electricity that's used to ionize the gases can be derived from sunlight, which is abundantly available across the solar system. In fact, we can now harness solar energy in space and send it back to Earth, and the plan is in place to actually do exactly that. Electric propulsion drives will also allow spacecraft to change their speeds and trajectories midway through missions. NASA has already experimented with SEP on its Dawn mission, but it is now preparing to demonstrate the most powerful version ever built on the power and propulsion element, or PPE, on the Gateway, its outpost that will orbit the moon. Gateway is a 60 kilowatt class spacecraft where 50 kilowatt will be dedicated to propulsion. Because there's no gravity, you don't need all that much power. NASA said this recently, and Aerojet Rocketdyne has built an electric propulsion system that has been dubbed the Advanced Electric Propulsion System, or AEPS. At 12 kilowatt, the AEPS is two times more powerful than the most advanced electric propulsion system built, but it needs to undergo qualification testing before it can become part of the PPE on the gateway. To do so, NASA and Aerojet have begun year-long tests of one of the qualification units, which are identical to the thrusters that will fly on the gateway in 2025. After verifying that the thruster is built correctly, engineers expose it to extreme shock vibrations and temperatures, simulated conditions during the launch and flight of the Artemis mission. Another qualification unit will be made available in 2024. In other words, what they're doing is they're going to test multiple devices to make sure that it's going to work as intended. These tests will mimic orbit raising and transition to lunar orbit maneuvers. All tests have been conducted in massive vacuum chambers at NASA's Glenn Research Center within the next six months. 
This testing campaign is a big deal, said Rohit Shastri, the lead engineer. It's kind of the final leg before we test the thrusters that will actually fly us through space. The comprehensive test will include 23,000 hours of operation for the thrusters over a four year period. The thrusters that will be placed on the PPE of the gateway will be actually launched prior to the wear tests being completed. With NASA missions, launch dates are critical, said Clayton Caselli, the, the project manager at NASA Glenn. In this case, NASA is trying to expedite the process and we're doing it intelligently. We will complete a few thousand hours of wear testing to prove, to prove successful operations before PPE launches. We'll then complete the final 15,000 hours or so to fully qualify the product for future customers. If you think about it, solar is incredibly valuable in our exploration of the universe. Not only can we use it now to travel through the universe, but also to do things like manufacture hydrogen, which would be necessary to get us off of Mars when we need to leave. Or when, for example, rockets would fly people or cargo back from Mars to Earth in order to resupply Mars again. So as you can see, solar in many ways is not just the future of the planet itself or the planet we now live on, but also it could be the future of the moon and other planets that we could one day populate. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.